isn't going to be a whole lot to enjoy in watching the Pittsburgh Baseball Club for the remainder of this summer. To be kind. But, but, if you're going to pay attention, and I'm sure a few of you are because you just pressed play on this particular podcast, then you'll at least be able to enjoy neat storylines like Rodolfo Castro. Good morning to you. Good Thursday morning. I'm Dan Kovacevic of DK Pittsburgh Sports. This is Daily Shot of Pirates. Comes your way bright and early every weekday. If you're into football and or hockey, I also offer up daily shots of Steelers and Penguins right where this came from. The Pirates had their brains beaten out again by the Brewers, 7-3. to three. I believe that makes for a cumulative score. Score or aggregate score to use the soccer term of 15 to 3 or whatever. Look, that's the way it's going to go. And it's only going to get worse the remainder of this week with more trades to come. Richard Rodriguez, Chris Stratton, Chad Cool, who knows who else. Brian Reynolds isn't going anywhere. I'm going to end up repeating that. But Brian Reynolds isn't going anywhere. And if I haven't mentioned it yet, Brian Reynolds isn't going anywhere. Neither is Castro. Castro homered twice last night. He now has home runs for all of his first five major league hits. He is the first player in Major League Baseball's modern era to achieve this rather strange feat. The Rockies' Trevor Story in 2016 had his first four hits in the bigs go over the fence but you know he plays for the rockies this is this is a little bit crazy castro hit a ball 437 feet into the bullpen last night went down and got the other pulling it out into the bleachers Uh, i don't know what the pirates have in this kid But I do know that it's exciting that he's here now already without yet having made a solitary stop in Indianapolis. Here's some of what Derek Shelton had to say after the game about Rodolfo Castro. Yeah, he's got a ton of confidence. I mean, I think like uh, we've talked about before, him of all our guys in player development, probably a little bit more of a relationship just because of being in instructional league with him last year and, and being able to, to talk to him. And then, he, you know, he was with us early in the year. The only thing that we've really talked to him about is make sure he's the same guy here that he is in Altoona because in Altoona, he's a leaner, he's a leader and he plays with a lot of energy and he continues to play with energy here. And, and that's really all we've asked. What is Castro? I, I don't know. You know, back in Bradenton, where you always take any power displays with a grain of salt. Castro put a couple out, and they looked convincing like these. He also showed a violent swing, which is, you know, great for a power hitter, but not so great when it comes to making frequent enough contact. And that had me kind of thinking that he's he's nowhere near being big league ready. He's going to run into one every once in a while, but he's not going to be able to hold down some kind of everyday spot in the lineup. But here we are. Here we are. All kinds of players are exiting. Gregory Polanco, the right fielder, he's not exiting, but... You know, they pretty much got one foot shoved out the door at this point. Even though Greg has hit better of late, meaning this month, Greg's got 0.00% of his future taking place in Pittsburgh. So you might as well start doing some of this. Uh, I don't want to see any more of Jared Oliva, but I also wouldn't want to see the Pirates discard Oliva without giving him a chance. In a perfect world, Travis Swaggerty would have stayed healthy as an outfielder in Indy all summer and would have worked his way up to Pittsburgh. He didn't. He's done. Shoulder. Been done for a while. 
so you look at that outfield and you see Reynolds obviously in center and you see Ben Gamble somewhat holding down left field, had him at leadoff last night. He could come or go rather easily if you had prospects to put out there. I'm not even sure what's an ideal position for Castro. He's not seen as some great defender anywhere on the field. So maybe you do look at him for right field or left field at a corner spot and see what you can get. That's certainly a safe place to house power. But the bigger issue with Castro, and not to be the guy who focuses on the negative when the kid's got five bombs right out of double A, but he's going to have to connect. He's going to have to hit some singles. He's going to have to hit some doubles. He's going to have to hit to the opposite field. He's going to have to do things that everyday eight hitters do as part of a contender. Not this season, obviously, but he's going to have to do them or show a trajectory toward being able to do them in order to be someone that you can look at and say, all right, now, this makes sense. He's 22 years old, still hasn't been in AAA, but he's shown all this and this power uh, in the bigs. What's the path toward getting him to that level of consistency that you need for offensive production? Or is he just going to be an all-or-nothing hitter? Hey, those guys exist all over baseball, so that's not even a knock anymore. Ideally, he becomes... More than that, ideally he becomes somebody that you can put, if not in the middle of your lineup, but somewhere near it, like a seven spot, something like that. And you can hope for some pop at the bottom of your order. I'd be okay with that, but you know what? This is what makes it hard to talk about Castro because he is 22. He hasn't been in AAA, and everything that he's done that's impressed the most – has been in a big league uniform, both in Bradenton and here in Pittsburgh. Uh, I'd love to see, and again, take this in the right spirit, I'd love to see pitchers in the National League counter him, expose him, find a weakness, find what they believe is a hole, challenge him, let him go through a slump, let's see how he gets out of it before we start getting all crazy and extrapolating, hey, he's going to hit a home run for every hit he has for the rest of his life. Uh, a little bit impractical. But you know what? At least it's fun to talk about him. There's nothing else to talk about these last two nights. I can't even begin to imagine what it's going to be like following this team night after night after night. When we come back, just one question. Time for just one question, and that portion of Daily Shot of Pirates is always brought to you by the good people at the North Shore Tavern, directly across Federal Street from PNC Park, home of Steak on a Stone, home of the planet's only fully dedicated Pittsburgh Baseball Club sports bar. And I'm talking front to back, wall to wall, ceiling to floor, Pirates memorabilia, year-round. Not just for show, not just in the summertime. Visit North Shore Tavern directly across Federal Street from PNC Park. Today's question comes from Tyler who asks, If the Pirates extend Brian Reynolds to a long-term deal this season, do you think it will change opinions in this town of the organization even a little bit? I'm sorry, i got to start laughing already. Not the opinions of the owner, but possibly the management team. No, Tyler, it will change absolutely nothing related to the particular portion of the public that you're describing. It just won't. Because, here, but just picture it, okay? The Pirates, let's say they trade, in addition to Adam Frazier and Tyler Anderson, that they move Richard Rodriguez and... Let's keep going here. Chad Cool, Chris Stratton, and now you've got five guys gone from a team that was already 30 games under 500 
and they're getting their brains beaten out night after night after night. And you're watching basically a lineup with 2.5 major league hitters in it between Reynolds, Kibrian, Hayes, and I don't know, add whoever else would happen to be at least a little bit hot at any given time as your 2.5. So everyone's already going to be in a really foul mood. Everyone's already irrationally angry over the trades that have been made because no one is going to bother digging into the quality of prospects or what kind of haul so-and-so got. You won't be able to find six people across the entirety of Western Pennsylvania who'd be able to name for you both kids that Ben Charrington got for Tyler Anderson from the Mariners. Not six people, unless you're counting employees of the team, and maybe not even a lot of them. So what's going to happen? Let's say, I don't know, a week or two passes. And everybody over there is really tired of getting beaten up, this and that. And they saw that Reynolds made it through the trade deadline, which he will, by the way. They're not trading Brian Reynolds. And they say, and maybe now's a good time to, to approach him, which, by the way, they won't. It's not going to happen in season. Uh, Charrington's made that pretty clear. That's something that he believes in doing in the winter time. But if they did... If they did, you tell me, Tyler, what would be the reaction. You tell me what people would say. It would be, oh, okay, so they signed him. That's just going to make him easier to trade because now the contract is you know, more set up for people's budgets and they bought out X number of years of arbitration and they tacked on a couple of years of buyouts, of free agency years, and this is great. Yeah, good for Nutting. Nutting's about to line his – just, that's just how it's going to go, man. That's just how it's going to go. It will not change a solitary thing. You could put no trade clauses, 100% no trade clauses into the contract. And it wouldn't change a thing because, again, the impression would be, well, who wouldn't want to leave nutting? So Reynolds would obviously waive his no trade clause to get the hell away from the Pirates. There's, There's not a W to be had here. Also... Also, and more important, at least from my own perspective, it just doesn't matter, man. It doesn't. The Pirates aren't in a position to win any kind of PR war, PR battle. uh, Certainly not anything related to the owner of the franchise. There can't be a less popular person in the western Pennsylvania region than Robert M. Nutting. There just can't be. You can't turn that around. You can't turn that around by signing Reynolds for years whenever he could be traded the very next day. You know, there's always, always, always a line that sticks it to nutting no matter what happens. And I'm not one of those people who says that he's, you know, to be absolved of criticism. I'm just trying to relay here that the the depth to which this sentiment exists. No, it will not change the organization or the perception of the organization. Not for five minutes, my man. Maybe seeing Reynolds signing paper to pen or pen to paper will make people get excited for about five minutes. And then that'll be about it. And that's not why you do something like that. You know, you try to work out something with that kid and with Kibrian Hayes for the long term, not for PR purposes, but because it's the right baseball move. Uh, we'll see if it comes to, to pass. They obviously already tried with Key. Uh, we'll see what happens with Reynolds as well. But that's not going to be until this winter. You can take that to the bank. I appreciate the question. I appreciate everybody listening to Daily Shot of Pirates, and we'll do another one of these tomorrow. <laughs> Hey, everybody, thanks for listening. Please subscribe to our DK Pittsburgh Sports channel, and don't forget to hit the bell to get notified every time we post a new video or podcast.